You demolished your shower, and now what are you going to do? Install the new shower valve, install the Hardy Backer board, and pre-float your shower pan. All right, so now that we got the Hardy Backer done, you know, on the walls, it's all installed in the niches. We have filled in all of the joints. If there was any open joints, like in the corner here, where sometimes the wall spreads apart. Um, touch up a few areas on the shower pan, but now we're ready to install Hydrogram. A couple things that you will need is the 3 16 by 5 30 seconds notched v notch trowel. Um, it's just enough to basically you know spread it on the surface and then we're gonna use a smooth edge here to flatten it out. So that's what that looks like. In some uh, places here we're gonna need uh, something like about a three inch paintbrush, a two inch by five inch margin trowel, and I like to have on hand here a six inch you know, drywall taping knife. So since I have a little bit of hydro band left over from a previous job, I'm gonna go ahead and use this bucket here. Typically we'll use about three to about, you know, four gallons. So I got about a gallon left in this hydro band bucket here. So let's get to it. Just go ahead and fill in all the corners first. Paint it on real heavy, fill it in. Later on we'll be coming back to install a fabric uh, right here in the corner. There's about a six inch wide roll of this fabric. It's a white, it's not a mesh, but uh, anyways, it'll help seal up the, the corners. After this coat dries, we're going to go ahead, we're going to cut the whole thing floor to ceiling uh, around all of the curb stuff. This mortar bed here is already pre-sloped down to the drain at a quarter of an inch per foot slope. So as you can see, kind of load up the paint pressure. I'm just filling in all of uh, any small little gaps in here. First, I'm going to put the fabric on and uh, then start coating the walls with all the V-notch trowel. But anyways, this is a, a two coat process. And you'll want to make sure that there are no pinholes, like little air holes in the product. So the product we're using today is Hydrogen. It's about $430 for a five gallon bucket. Um, and, but you can use it on anything. It'll seal up everything fantastic. So it's, it's what I have faith in, you know, as far as making sure that none of these showers ever leak. And uh, unlike a, you know, vinyl shower pan liner, the vinyl shower pan liner, of course, just goes up and over the threshold here, goes up about 12 inches, you know, up the wall on the sides here. But it would be impossible to seal up something like a shampoo niche with that OD shower pan liner. So that's why we use the hydro pan. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and skip to the next part. Taking a brand new. 3 16 by 5 30 seconds V-notch drown. Initially, you know, it'll want to fall off a little bit. Kind of see how thick it is. You can see I just load it up. And I'm going to go ahead and create the beakers. This stuff does dry fast. So you won't like want to let it sit on the wall for too long, like more than really a minute or so. You can see it's, you know, it'll turn like a darker green when it's drying. If you have a question about part of this process, please leave a comment down below. So now that we've got about three or so square feet, might be 18 inches wide, might be about four and a half square feet on this. I'm gonna flip from the V-notch side here to the smooth edge, and then we can go ahead and just knock down without actually removing any of the product. So I'm gonna flip it around here. 
And don't worry about the little, you know, holes and things, maybe the grooves right now. Like I said, we don't, we want to have it to where we're just not really taking anything off. Just make sure you don't have any big ridges in the product. Because we're just, we can, all the grooves we can go back and fill in later. So, I think you can kind of fuss with this as much as you want to. Oh, there's a big chunk. All right. Anyway, it's just kind of best to move on and go ahead and fill in any, you know, slight imperfections a little later. The whole coating process of the shower will take about two to four hours. Two hours if you've been working with this product before many times, and at the most four hours, you know, if this is your first time. See you back here in a little bit. Now it's uh, time to put the second coat of Hydroban on. Yesterday we went ahead and coated all of the shower walls from floor to ceiling because that's where our tile is going to be. Uh, did the first coat on the shower pan without any sort of reinforcement fabric. Uh, so today with the second coat we're going to use the mesh and it's like a fabric not like your you know cross hatched weave. So we're going to go ahead and use this uh, fabric here to do all of the inside corners here along the shower pan, top of the shower threshold uh, bench and all the other inside corners inside the niche and so on up there. Anyways, uh, to get started with this, I went ahead and pre-cut myself a length of fabric here this, and then I'm going to go ahead and put it down in this inside corner. You want to treat this a lot like doing drywall work. Go ahead and take what would be your drywall mud, but just this Hydroman waterproofing. Go ahead and put down kind of a thick layer of it, because what you're going to be doing is really just squeezing it out. So I went ahead and put a thick layer here on the bottom. You'll want to do for the other side of the wall. Let me go ahead and move this bucket out of the way. Go ahead and put this on the wall, kind of the same as you would do drywall mud. If you have any drywall mud experience, then um, you know for taping and bedding, then you'll do really well with this. So I'll just go ahead and put on the, what seems like an excessive amount here. Slightly clean it up. Kind of squeeze it off to the side. All right, so I was just using my five inch margin trowel uh, to scoop it out of the bucket. And then just kind of like you would do with drywall work, I got my six inch taping knife for the six inch fabric here. And what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna fold this in half and do our best to get it to go right into the corner. So sometimes I prefer to pre-fold it here now that we got that exactly in half, go ahead and uh, fit that into the corner. You're bound to get some of this hydrogen on your fingers, so don't really worry about it. If you get it while it's wet, it, it'll wash right off. And we're going to go ahead and tuck it into the corner. You know, if you don't get it right in on the corner, then it might get a little wrinkled up on you. But we're going to squeeze it a little bit up like this. From the corner, moving up, squeezing out the hydroband as you go. And 
And then now for the bottom. I'll go ahead and squeeze that out. If you have any excess, feel free to go ahead and put it back in the bucket. Take this as clean as you can, but don't fuss with it for too long. You can always wait for it to dry up a bit and then uh, it'll be a little easier to scrape off. So after you squeeze out the hydro band from the underside of the fabric tape here, we're also going to coat the top side. And that basically, by doing all of this squeezing it out, it keeps the air bubbles out of the tape. Because you don't want that stuff, you know, peeling up. It's got to treat it pretty much the same as uh, paper drywall tape. For this next wall here, this is going to be the same as what you saw on the other wall here. We're going to go ahead and take a healthy amount of hydrogen and spread it out. Then go ahead, now that we've done the floor part, go ahead and just drop some on the floor and kind of spread it up. You want to get up at least that three inches up the wall. I got this five inch trowel, so we definitely know we're doing that. It's kind of a little hard to do it left handed. Same as the other wall, we went ahead and pre-cut the length here. So just went ahead and pre-cut it. Go ahead and fold it in half so you have a seam sort of along the back. That's about halfway there. I like to kind of create a crease here, which makes it a little bit easier on me. And we're going to go ahead and tuck it into the corner. Okay. Then go ahead and get your six inch drywall taping knife and then that way you can just go ahead and press the fabric into the joint there. You're going to have some excess so just go ahead and leave it on the floor for right now. Go ahead and push, squeeze the fabric up the wall. and occasionally tucking that fabric back in to the corner. If you want to use two different tools here to hold one and then squeeze, it might be a little easier and faster for it. Get a little bit more perfect joints there.
All right, so we've got all of this fabric pressed into place on the joint. And let's go ahead and take some of our extra mud and go ahead and coat over the top of it. Just the same way as you would do gravel mud. Don't worry about getting some of this stuff on the shower floor. The shower floor is going to eventually get second coated, you know, again all by itself. And then look for any air holes and gaps and things like that. Make sure you give it a good coat. <laughs> this is not the time to be cheap with your waterproofing material. So we just got done doing the inside corner of this threshold here with, with the fabric, okay? You can tell here, this fabric here is, is finely woven. It's, it's like a fine cloth here. Anyways, uh, I went ahead and pre-cut a five foot length to go from wall to wall. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it in half again, just like I did all the others. You can kind of crease it a little bit. Okay, so now that you have that, uh, we need to go ahead and coat the top corner Top edge. This one, get that off of here. Take my lid off. Go ahead and scoop some out. Now, you gotta realize the, the inside edge here that you can't see inside here is already wet with hydrogen. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the top edge here. Spread it out. Don't be afraid of it for it to drip over. That's the beauty of this, you can definitely just trowel it again. Maybe get a little bit up on the sides here for the fabric that will overlap. And if you feel like coating the inside with a fresh coat of wet stuff, in case it's been a few minutes, because this stuff does dry pretty fast, feel free to do that. here with the joint you know basically right on that corner the folded corner right on that inside corner which is really the out and outside corner on the inside of the shower line it up and press it down a little bit So now I can unfold this fabric here, take my six inch drywall taping knife and squeeze the excess out. And you can see that hydrogen, you know, will basically soak right through the fabric here. We've got all that squeezed out here. We'll go ahead and fold over the edge. And of course, this is where you're gonna to have to do uh, some sort of cut across here in order for this to bend down. I'm gonna get my drywall little knife here. Now, I'm gonna be careful not to cut the actual hydrants. We're gonna hold this hydrant in place with our taping knife. So now we got this tucked in. The hydrogen is squeezed out of the top. I 
I'll go ahead and clean that up. downward angle here to squeeze it down out of it so that way it doesn't squeeze it back up into the corner. And that'll give you a nice sharp corner to work with. beautiful on the inside here and then same as what we've done here on top or on all the coats right whether it be on top here or on the inside once you get that nice corner gone or it looks like a 90 degree angle just go ahead and coat the surface of it to cut off I'm just gonna go ahead and add some hydroband here go ahead and just lay this down into it it'll just disappear behind all of your tile work Once you've got this uh, looking the way you want to, it's all dried, and, and then we're going to do a second coat on the shower walls. Uh, once everything looks good, you know, you, and it's dry, so that means tomorrow, right? We will go ahead and go back, check the little, you know, pin holes, that sort of thing. Make sure that we're confident that this whole thing's 100% sealed up. Let that dry, and then we're going to go ahead and do a shower pan test. So I got a little more coating to do on the inside here on that fabric. She can see everything. Once again, going at a slight little angle down there, does that beautiful night every corner. Pretty darn good. All right, people. I think I uh, clean up that front edge here.
All right, so the, for those of you who are not familiar with code requirements for a shower, uh, this particular threshold here has a quarter of an inch per foot slope on it. I went ahead and pre-sloped all my framing. You can choose to float it with some mortar, just as long as everything's attached, you know, very secure to uh, the framing, or that's why I kind of choose to do the framing, because I can just go ahead and attach the hardy backer with some, with an inch and five eighths hardy screws. It's already pre, you know, pitched. It's kind of hard to tell obviously in here, but it's quarter of an inch per foot slope is the requirement. So basically over three inches, we're kind of talking about, you know, a 16th to an eighth. You might as well just go ahead and do an eighth. Feel free to do more, uh, it won't hurt. So when the water comes down the shower glass, it hits this. And rather than wanting to roll outside of the shower, it's gonna come back into the shower. Uh, underneath the tile, you know, underneath this area here, here, so the water comes off on it here, hits your shower pan, and then drains off through about four weep holes in this plastic thing here. It's not the tile that's waterproof. It's not the caulking that's waterproof. It's not the grout that's waterproof. It, everything has to do with the shower pan and the weep holes. You could theoretically just shower in this shower here. The tile is just merely decorative. So keep that in mind when you're redoing your shower.